All right, so here's the John Deere Saber again. I did a video on this figuring out why it wouldn't start, and I found out that it had valve issues. And so today I'm going to be looking deeper into the engine to see what's up. I, I want to pull the engine out of the machine to uh, work on it easier, because I feel like I'm going to be removing the valves and... Well, it's going to be easier to do that if the if the engine is out of the machine. And then I can also inspect the piston and bore and everything else inside of it. And But of course, before I do that, I want to try to... Well, not try to. I want to get the plow off of it. And then, uh, um, then I can roll it into the garage and remove the engine, which the plow isn't difficult at all. So the first thing you have to do is remove that pin. You have one on either end. It's just right underneath the front axle. That's the front of the tractor. And you just want to remove that on either side. And that's um, a guide to keep it from going from left to right. And then uh, you need to remove this rod that angles the blade. And then underneath it, you got that system that you're gonna need to unbolt actually just two pins up top on either side again and then around back you just have one bolt that bolts right into the hitch and so I'm gonna get that done I'm gonna undo all that and then I should just be able to back the tractor out of it all right so there's the plow and there's the tractor so now I just rolled it back after I unhooked everything. And um, something else I forgot to do was um, unbolt this piece. This was the piece that went right onto the back hitch. Uh, I have to do that, otherwise the transmission won't clear it. So that's just the only thing I did that I didn't say. But, well there's the plow, I can now put the plow in storage. And I can now roll the tractor in the garage and work on it much easier. Alright, so the tractor is now in here. I removed the hood already. And the, the engine shroud, I just... Last time I was working on it, I didn't bolt it back down or anything like that. Because I knew I was going to be taking it back off again. So I just set it on top of the engine. So that's off. And now I want to... I'm going to remove the flywheel real fast, just to... Because a comment on the last video of this tractor said to um to actually remove the key, which I'll do that um, just to see what it looks like. The easiest way I've found to try to get a flywheel off is to get an air hammer, screw the bolt back in a little bit, which is what I have right there, and uh, take a pry bar, put the pry bar underneath, the flywheel gently and uh, apply a little force with the air hammer but of course before I do that I want to remove the coil I want to remove the coil before I do anything with the flywheel this way I'm not going to damage the coil And then after the coil is removed, then I'll get the pry bar underneath it, underneath the flywheel, and then put gentle pressure on the air hammer. I'm actually going to remove the entire coil. stuck in there. Fantastic. There we are. Oh, 
Yeah, I damaged the cooling fin a little bit, but that's all right. Now, is that not off enough? Okay. I'm gonna try to get it from a different angle now. I got it a little bit. So here's the little keyway, or the key rather. It's not sheared. Nope, it's just fine. So, now I'm going to reinstall the flywheel. This way it makes it easier to spin the engine over. Um, yeah, that's what that's what you have to be careful about. That's This is the... Um, I guess kind of like the alternator to charge the battery. Um, that's what you have to be careful about so you don't damage that, which I didn't. And the pry bar wasn't long enough to damage anything in it, so that's fine. I'll get the flywheel back on it, which is just kind of the reverse process, only instead of using the air hammer, you just run that bolt down until you can't anymore. When removing an engine from a machine you always want to drain the oil unplug all the wires take all the pulleys and belts off from underneath it and then and then you should be good to remove it and then of course unbolt all the mounting bolts but it's not that difficult I've done I've done a few engine swaps actually where I've just swapped engines out of a machine that's bad into a machine that's good. Um, I mean, I have a John Deere 111 that I did an engine swap on. I mean, the old engine and the 111 had a hole in the side of it, and uh, that wasn't supposed to be there. But, oh well, I'm just draining the oil now, and while that's draining, I'm going to go unplug all of these wires from the starter, the grounding wire that's down there, and then the pulleys underneath I'll also take care of. Alright, so the oil is done draining. I disconnected all of those wires on that side. And uh, that fuel solenoid wire I disconnected, that's disconnected. The fuel line's disconnected, the throttle cable is disconnected. The flywheel is back on. Next up, I'm going to get take those um, covers off and... Uh, get them out of my way for the exhaust. Actually, I might only remove this side one and then just unscrew the exhaust from that side. I'll probably do that and then see, um, and then just be able to leave the exhaust in there. Okay. Alright, so here's underneath the machine. That pulley needs to come undone. I need to unbolt it. And I believe that's one mounting bolt, and that's the second, and then there's two more on the other side. So, that's a mess to work in, but oh well. And um, so I'm going to get that undone, and then hopefully the engine should be good to just pull out. Alright, so now that should be everything. Uh, I hope that's everything. Now I'm just gonna try to lift it up. And see what happens. There we are. Oh, engines are not light. There we are. That was
was easy. All right. That's how organized I am. I, uh, I need to get more room to be more organized, but until then, let's, let's focus on this. All right, the first thing I want to do is get the intake manifold off. And I think that's just two bolts right here. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. Oh, and this breather for the... There we are. Oh, and the linkage. Oh, there's a linkage there. Oops. Oh, dang it. Okay. I forgot that one linkage. Right back there. Well, that's alright. Next up is just taking this valve cover off. Which I know I've already had it off before. I just I put it back on in case it rained with the tractor sitting outside. I didn't want rain to get into the valve system. But Okay. I'll leave those right there for now. And now I can unbolt this entire assembly. And I already had it unbolted once when I replaced the head gasket. But let's uh, unbolt it again. Alright, let's get the head off and see what it looks like inside. Don't worry, I'm being... Um, as gentle as I can be. The reason I'm using an impact gun, I'd prefer to use a wrench, but the engine just moves around. I should have um, unbolted the head while the engine was still on the machine. But, oh well. Just to get them loose, and then... space a long time ago. Okay. Alright. Uh, push rod seem okay. Oh boy, there's a difference. Okay. Oh, what the, I need a rag for my hands. Covered in oil. Okay. So there's the piston, nothing too bad there. I mean, as I said, the piston is, um, or was fine. Uh, throw this on the shopping list, the head gasket for this engine. And then, oh, okay. L let me clean this up. So that top one is the intake, and it's got a lot of carbon buildup, but I don't know, it doesn't look too bad. Maybe I'll try to remove it. It doesn't seem that difficult. So they do make proper tools to remove the valves, but I do not have that tool. Not yet, at least. I am working on buying it. So, until then, I'll just make do with what I have and use a screwdriver to try to pry down and try down on it. And there we are. See? Even without the right tools, you still get the job done. 
And, uh, that was the wrong valve. That's the exhaust valve. Okay. Well, I can even look at this, so. You can see all along the race, just in the center part. That's what I'm really looking at to see if there's good contact. And, uh, I mean, there's just a carbon buildup. So... That's the exhaust valve, and I'm going to keep these, and I'm going to make sure that I keep the exhaust valve stuff with the exhaust valve stuff. I like the spring, and the cap, I'm just going to keep that all together. And then the same thing with the intake. Just going to remove the cap, put that in a separate area. And press down on the spring and remove it. Just like that. Uh, I'm not put that there. I'm going to put that on the other side of the bench. Alright, now. Oh, geez, that looks fine. All along there. Oh, come on now. Come on, focus. Not, not on my hand. On the valve itself. Mm. Just looking at the race, and it it looks fine. Okay. So, knowing that much, I am going to go buy some. Lapping compound, I believe that's what it's called. And then uh, I'm going to try to put the valves back together and uh, just see what happens. Because, I mean, both the valves look all right, not the greatest. They have a lot of carbon buildup, but that's all right. So, that's that. And that's probably the end of today. Yeah, that's the big mess I've made. And then with the tractor, I'm going to pressure wash it to clean it up. And maybe I'll try to look for either a new engine, a used engine, or... Try to repair this one. But as I said, the valves look fine, and how much more money do I want to spend on this machine? I don't know. But I'll figure it out.